Welcome to Southwest Now, the video magazine that focuses on the career and educational training opportunities at Southwest Tennessee Community College. I'm Brenda Rayner. On this edition of Southwest Now, we'll take you atop the Eiffel Tower and inside some historical landmarks of Paris, France, as we review the Biotechnology International Studies Study Abroad France Tour. Southwest Study Abroad Program provided the rare opportunity for six biotechnology programs students, two associate professors of natural sciences, and I for documentation to go on an eight-day study abroad trip to Paris, France, which included a never-before-granted tour of Genepo, France's leading biopark center on gene research. We'll also be talking with Kim Barnett, the Associate Director of Workforce Development at Southwest, who will discuss the college's new industrial readiness training program. First, Here's a quick introduction to the Biotechnology Study Abroad team, Associate Professors of Natural Sciences, Dr. Amy Waddell, Leading Faculty, and Dr. Julianne Waite, Department Chair of Natural Sciences, who met me in the studio. Let's take a look. I am pleased to have with me Dr. Julianne Waits, Department Chair for Natural Sciences at Southwest, and Dr. Amy Waddell, Associate Professor of Natural Sciences, who are also my traveling companions during the Biotech International Studies Study Abroad trip to France. Dr. Waddell, your involvement with biotechnology was the impetus that spawned this trip to France in which we visited Devry University where we heard presentations on the latest advancement in gene therapy and we also went to Genepol and there we uh, kind of looked at stem cell research and you know, Genepol of course is the leading biotech center on gene research in France. Tell us about how did this all happen? Well, it all started a little over a year before we took the trip, I was in a meeting with the provost, Dr. Joanne Bassett, with uh, the Memphis Bioworks Business Association, and they mentioned a study that they were doing with some people in France, and immediately Dr. Bassett's eyes lit up, and she said, oh, international studies trip, and she asked me to call Dr. McColgan, who was head of the program at the time, and so I did, and from there, the people with Memphis Bioworks helped us with contacts in France, and the rest is history. Well, wow. Now, Dr. Um, Wait, just so that our audience can know, tell us a little bit about what biotechnology is. Just briefly uh, describe well, it, define it. What, what do we do? Biotechnology actually is a two-year program that we offer in Associates of Applied Science where a student learns how to use hands-on technical skills in a laboratory setting. And this particular course allowed for those students to see how labs and work related and to other countries, as far as laboratory management is concerned, actually function. Uh, the two-year biotech program is set up so that a student has an opportunity to intern at the end of the program and actually potentially lead directly into a career. And what was the overall response from the students? They had an opportunity to travel abroad, which was totally amazing, and got a chance to see some things and research that our students don't normally get a chance. Well, we have great labs here. I right. want to say that yes, because we, do. we really do have great labs, but you get to see how they do it abroad. Um, just the opportunity to actually travel abroad for many of these students. This may be the one time in their lifetime they'll ever get an opportunity of this type. Um, they got to combine educational uh, aspects to the trip as well as uh, tourism. And so they got, a, yeah, nice. they got a lot of great landmarks. And at the same time, they had an opportunity to learn a lot about the science that's associated with historically the, the, the country of France as well as with the modern technology that's occurring at this time. Okay, well I, I want you to tell me about some of the educational sites that we visit, visited of course, but you also lectured while we were there. The students actually had classes and you, you talked about some of the French scientists. Mm -hmm. uh, can you we mention did. a few of them? I, I was very fortunate. I, I got the lectures that I thought were <clears throat> the most historically interesting because I got to talk about the country itself it, and we actually arrived during a time period where the presidents were changing and we were going from Nicolas Sarkozy to Francois Hollande 
and we arrived right as that time period was happening. So my lecture on the country itself tied very well with what was going on politically. And at the same time, I got an opportunity to lecture again on French scientists, famous French scientists. And we had the opportunity to go to the Pasteur Institute. And that was a great experience for the students, really tied the educational component to the actual uh, study abroad trip. And the other uh, educational sites that we visited were? Um we visited uh, the largest museum of science and industry that is in Paris and got to see, uh, they have all sorts of interactive uh, exhibits there and we got to visit that. Um, we wanted to visit the Curie Museum, but, uh, but uh, unfortunately it was under renovation. So we weren't able to do that at the time. Okay, and then we also had an opportunity to do some sightseeing, which was educational in itself as yes. well. Yes, oh absolutely. And some of the places, um, the landmarks that were just most remarkable to you, Dr. Waits. Well, outside of the Pasteur Institute, which I enjoyed immensely and was very much impressed by, um, I would have to say that the Louvre would probably be my, my sec second favorite landmark that we visited, and simply because it gave us an opportunity to tie together science, art, history, um, and the huge amount of actual material that the students uh, got an opportunity to see from Egyptian, uh, you know, tombs and, and uh, to um, actual, uh, there was a special on uh, Leonardo da Vinci's last etchings, um, and so it was a special tour through that section of the museum, and they really, really enjoyed seeing all of the, the Mona Lisa that they could that see. Was yeah, that was something else. That was exciting. And, and for you, Dr. Waddell, what was the, um, the most remarkable landmark or the most memorable portion, aspect of the visit for you? Well, for me, um, I would say the most remarkable landmark for me was Versailles because of the scope of Versailles. The uh, buildings as well as the gardens and the fountains and all of that was just absolutely breathtaking. Um, but I think the most memorable thing to me was something that was very small. When we went to the Arc de Triomphe, they were actually having a parade for the new president. And so there were a lot, there were just tons of police and soldiers and, you know, just a big fanfare going on. And so that was something really exciting to be able to witness. Okay, and the students now, um International, the International Studies Program uh, enhances student success at Southwest. So for our students, if they re you comment to you about what meant most to them on this trip. Go ahead. I think it was just the opportunity to get to go and that they had a, a way in which they could take a path that would allow for them to take this trip almost completely financially uh, free, um, that they had certain things that they had to do, which you should probably talk about as far as activities for international studies, but that, that this trip was supported by the International Studies Program here at Southwest. And without that, I doubt many of them could have gone. So that was very important. Okay, now let's, let's just talk about the, the culture, the, the Frenchmen, and, and how we live. Because when we were there, we took the subway. Yes, we yes. did. Which was really interesting. We walked the streets with the people themselves. And so um, why was it set up that way and that experience um, for us as um, Americans being able to actually uh, interact with Frenchmen, restaurants, um, menus, and, 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 you know, and trying to uh, translate the streets. We were Catching immersed the in the culture. Yes. 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 We were definitely immersed in the culture. Um, we set it up so that we would be traveling by metro and walking because that's the way the majority of the people in Paris actually get around the city. Um, there are cars, of course, but it's not nearly as uh, big of a mode of transportation as the subway is. And so we, we actually, in the course, did an activity where the students had to look at a metro map and map the way to different sites 
themselves and they had to learn how to use the metro system themselves in addition to all of the other things that were were taught to them. We went to France in May and it was cold. Yes. <laughs> it was cold and it I don't know cold. if I expected it to really be that cold but you know we did visit the Eiffel Tower and the lines were what um, uh, incredible long incredibly long should I say um, was it what you expected? I actually thought the lines were short. Really? Um, because of the weather pattern and because it was cold, I thought the lines were short. Um, mm. I expected on a sunny day they would have been much longer. Um, even though the fog was a little difficult to see through once we got to the top of the tower and we had to convince a couple students to go to the top of the tower, which was a little bit harder. Um, once we got them out there and you could you could see the rest of the city, I think they were just very much impressed that they, you know, got an opportunity to get up there and that they went and, and that the line was definitely worth the way, you know, the way. Right, absolutely. It was, it was incredible uh, being up there and just looking over the city. As you mentioned, there was the fog, but you could see the... The, the boats underneath, or the, uh, what do you call those things, uh, the boats, or the, they're not flats. Uh, barges? The ferries? The barges. Oh, you okay. could see the barges as they were uh, going down the river, so the view from the top was really absolutely amazing. Now, you know, we're focusing here at Southwest on student success. D do you think the experience of uh, the International Studies program, period, do you think that enhances and engage students to the degree that they want to finish their program and broaden their horizons on what's out there in terms of opportunities for them just here in the United States and possibly abroad? Go ahead. I think the international studies definitely um, instills a sense of accomplishment in students. It's a, a, a competitive program to get into to begin with. You have to have a good grade point average and letters of recommendation. And then they have to do many hours of service to the college in order to be able to go on the trip. And that's kind of the way that they pay for the trip is with their service. And I think that that really instills in them a sense of community with the college and that they're really part of something that's bigger than just our program. And um, our students are either graduated by now or a semester away from graduating. So all of them have been very successful. That's, that's amazing. And now, uh, when we look at our program, Dr. Waite, and our, our, the students were able to look at laboratories there in France as well, and did they find that what we're doing in our laboratories and our equipment, did they find that is comparable? And what, what would you say about, I mean, what does that say about Interestingly enough, I think that I was impressed that we had comparable laboratory equipment. I wasn't exactly sure what to expect, and so the students were also, they would go, we have that, we have that, we have that. And the nice thing about that is that, that they're also capable of using those pieces of equipment and that, that they realize that they are learning skills that are used in other countries and used in other scientific labs and really seeing how that ties together with their potential career opportunities. Um, and Dr. Waite, while we were there, we had an opportunity to um, visit the laboratories at Devry University, and there was a, a scientist, French scientist there, who's doing research with diamonds, nanoparticle diamonds. Can you kind of talk about that process? Um, well, what he was actually talking about or working with is nanotechnology, and a form of nanotechnology to actually adhere um, these small diamonds and he showed us some diamond dust which the students were very much impressed by um, but he also showed us how he could get that to adhere to particular uh, I want to say he was looking at immunoglobulins is that correct proteins, proteins right and um, and then you could actually fluoresce and you could see them on a monitor so you could evaluate those and part of that is 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 associated with drug delivery and even in the United States when we talk about nanotechnology we're generally talking about drug delivery or some form of gene therapy or the activation of a particular protein or deactivation of that protein and so we teach a little bit of that to our students that's pretty advanced technology but at the same time it was very nice to see that 
even within that context, a lot of the laboratory equipment that they used was the same as what we have. Okay. And so, overall, Lee, you'd say that uh, the trip to France was exciting, it was amazing, and it was something that our students definitely will remember for a lifetime. Our students now, they're, they're doing well. Can you kind of tell us about where some of them are now? Go ahead. Well, Catherine is at Merck, um, and she's doing work with uh, some of the products that they produce there, um, looking at phase trials um, with human use of these products like copper tone and things like that. Um, Doretha is working at Oxford Immunotech and they do testing for tuberculosis and she is also pursuing a further degree in uh, the medical technologies so that she can move up in the company. Um, Marina it has moved on to a four-year degree and she also is working here as a tutor for us for uh, the H-1B grant that we have with the Department of Labor. And the rest of the students are just finishing up their degrees, so we'll see what the future holds for them. The International Studies Program provides life-changing opportunities for students here at Southwest. So glad you could be here, Dr. Julianne Waite and also Dr. Amy Waddell. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. While in France, the team set their sights on the best Paris had to offer, from the newest stem cell and gene research to ancient sculptures and paintings on exhibit at the Louvre, one of the world's largest and the most visited art museum. Here are some highlights of the visit. We arrived in Paris around 10 o'clock a.m. Central European time and checked in the UB Hotel. After making it through the daunting task of room assignments, we headed out on foot to explore local restaurants for an evening meal. Not far from the hotel, we found La Plage. The food was great, which compelled us to make several return trips. The next day, we visited the University of Devry for presentations on the latest advancements in stem cell research. We also visited Le Musée du Louvre, the Louvre Museum. Tourists from all over the world photographed the glass pyramids and water fountains in front of this 12th century chateau. The museum houses splendid ancient artifacts and Roman, Greek, and Islamic paintings, sculptures, works of art and antiquities, sarcophaguses, crown jewels, gold embroidered painted ceilings, and massive dazzling chandeliers, too much for the eye to behold in a single setting. The Palace of Versailles was breathtaking to behold with its gold-trimmed overhangs, its enchanting gardens, which according to the palace officials, forms one of the most famous World Heritage Monuments and stands out as the finest, most complete achievement of the 17th century. The flowers were not yet in bloom, but we enjoyed the beautiful white marble statues that dwarf the tallest of us and the bountiful fountains embellished with mythological centerpieces that appeared poised to ride into the heavens as we walked in the gardens and the park of Versailles. We took a break for lunch and a quick shopping excursion. We picked up some souvenirs in one of the open markets near the palace. Afterwards, we toured the interior of Versailles, which was equally stunning with magnificent fireplaces surrounded by marble and golden pillars topped with ornate mantles, portraits of former kings, sculptures, and some remnants of royal furnishings. At Notre Dame de Paris, French for Our Lady of Paris, beautiful pink flowers trim the lawn. Again, we joined the long line of pilgrims wanting to glimpse the inside of this great edifice. We were fortunate enough to time our trip actually to observe a homily in the sacred cathedral. There was a hushed beauty that drew many onlookers to tears. Several of our students in the group were Catholic and were overtaken by the experience. We visited the Pasteur Institute Museum, home and laboratory for French chemist Louis Pasteur, known for inventing a method to stop milk and wine from causing sickness, a process that came to be called pasteurization. It was like walking back in time to see his scientific instruments and the lavish home which he and his family lived. His body is laid in a vault beneath the Pasteur Institute. 
No better way to end a trip than going atop the Eiffel Tower and overlooking Paris in all its splendor. We took the lift to the top of the Eiffel Tower. The fog laid over the city like a blanket as the ships and barges sailed down the Seine River. Later that evening, we took a night cruise on the river. We boarded the cruise boat Les Vides de Pont Neuf, directly across the docks to the famous monument, the Arc de Triomphe. It looked stately and glorious against the Parisian sky. A parade of military men in dress uniform marched around it in honor of those who died in the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars. While cruising down the scene, famous landmarks of Paris could be seen along the shoreline. We were hoping to see the Eiffel Tower lit up, but at 10 p.m. it was still dusk when we cruised past it. Oh well, maybe next time. The night air was brisk, and the walk to the hotel, which would be our last, was bittersweet. The next morning, we headed back to the United States to recount the tale of our journey with family and friends. The trip to Paris, to say the least, was memorable. For more information about Southwest International Studies Program, call 333-4250 or visit us at www.southwest.tn.edu. Now, we'll be joined on set by Kim Barnett of the Industrial Readiness Program. Manufacturing is making a big comeback nationally, but industry has found that the labor force is not sufficiently skilled to handle the new, more advanced technology now being employed. Southwest Industrial Readiness Training Program is collaborating with local industry to help prepare workers for entry into the job market. Associate Director of Workforce Development, Kim Burnett, has joined us to talk about the Industrial Readiness Training Program, IRT, which he manages. Hello, Mr. Barnett, and Hello. thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Tell us, Mr. Barnett, what is the Industrial Readiness Training Program? Okay. The Industrial Readiness Training Program, or, uh, IRT, was uh, developed at Southwest in partnership with the Workforce Investment Network, WIN, uh, business, industry, local government, in response to the need for employers who could not find skilled people to do uh, job-ready applicants for the jobs they had. Now, what are some of the challenges that industry is facing now with trying to identify and recruit uh, skilled or mm -hmm. trained employees? Well, the industry's challenges right now are employees that are retiring, their companies are growing, and the technologies that are ever-changing for them, and they're having a hard time finding those job-ready applicants. One of the things that uh, we're seeing is that more manufacturers are looking for employers or employees who have soft skills. And those soft skills are, of course, a willingness to be able to do the various tasks uh, and functions that they have for their jobs. Now, the Industrial Readiness Program has really grown in popularity. <laughs> uh, you provide these soft skills. Can you kind of talk about what it is that you do with the applicant and kind of tell us about how long that program is? Well, what we do is it's a four-week program. And what we're doing is on each day of the program, it's a four-hour day, we're going to take you through several different modules. We're going to talk about communication. We're going to talk about emotional intelligence. We're going to talk about uh, things which help to improve your, your, uh, you in the eyes of the employer. Uh, soft skills, of course, when you're talking about the um, uh, emotional intelligence, we're talking about how to work in teams, how to better make decisions. We're also going to cover technical things as well. We're going to do math, applied math, as well as look at machines and mechanics. We want to make sure that what the industry needing, especially that soft skills and that willingness to perform, is definitely what the person gets during that four weeks. Okay, so you um, mm -hmm. basically prepare that student with, once again, those soft skills so yes. that when they get into the job market, mm -hmm. they are employable mm -hmm. and can hold on, maintain that wonderful new job that's out there. Yes, and one of the, the beauties of the program we have, we're working with sponsoring companies like Electrolux. And what they're doing is that they sponsor a, uh, a, uh, a class 
they are actually a part of the class. They're actually sitting in the classroom. They're observing the students as we take them through the four weeks. They're listening to their responses. They're also gauging how they respond, and they're also witnessing uh, how they respond and, re and interact among themselves. One of the things that it does is it helps the employer as they get ready to make that hiring decision because they've got to see this uh, employee or applicant in action in the classroom. Well, can anybody get into this program? Well, one of the things that we're focusing on is the concern that industry has is they say they can't find anyone in this area. As a matter of fact, they've gone outside our community looking for people instead of right here in our own backyard. What we do with this program is we take people who are unemployed or underemployed and we teach them the skills that they need to have. We take them through this program and teach those soft skills, teach them that willingness they must have, and those things are what we're showing the employer that at the end of the program, these applicants or the people that they're looking for are here, and we've got them ready for you to hire. If individuals are out there and they're interested in the IRT, the Industrial Readiness Training Program, if they're a business, um, someone from the industry, or even someone who's interested in getting into the job market, how do they contact you? Well, we encourage people to go to the WIN site. That's Workforce Investment Network site. And click on the site and it has information about the IRT or Industrial Readiness Training Program. Or they can simply contact Southwest Tennessee Community College at 901-333-4207. Thank you, Mr. Barnett. We've been talking to Mr. Kim Barnett, Associate Director of the Workforce Development Program at Southwest. We've come to the end of this edition of Southwest Now. Southwest Now is a joint production of the Communications and Marketing and Multimedia Digital Production Departments. Thank you for watching. I'm Brenda Rayner. We'll see you next time.